Well, so could the Super Eagles attain Afghan glory after more than a decade? It's a question that must be answered. Mm -hmm. We're joined now by the chairman of the Nigeria Premier Football League, Benga uh, Legbele. Benga Legbele, if you can hear us very clearly, let me just go ahead and ask that question as to why there's only one home-based player in the Nigerian team. What does that say about our sports development, football development at the grassroots level specifically? Well, I'm not happy because what I, well, as to why, I cannot explain it. Because only the coach know why he choose to pick just uh, Olo Lekke Ojo out of uh, the 30 players going for AFCON. Uh, I remember June last year when we had our Super 6, uh, Coach Parcero was invited uh, to Odecon Stadium to watch uh, all our games. And it was, I mean, I saw him putting down some names we, we discussed. And I was, I was a period I had a lot of uh, good impression about the, the play and the players. Uh, but surprisingly, well, when the list came out, what we saw is that it was just one um, only home base player. So it's quite disappointing, but I don't know why. But at the same time, I wish the Super Eagles well, whether home base or foreign base. But I want us to do well in uh, Cote d'Ivoire and probably possibly win the. Uh, I've gone and bring it. But as for not going with enough home, uh, home base, well, I think we're still a development process, and I think uh, there will be more and more games. So, but on our own part from the local league, we want to be improving, and we are, quite, we are, we are uh, doing well at present, and we want uh, improvement so that then our players can uh, excel, and again, next time, they'll call them to, uh, for more national assignments. All right. We understand there were six uh, domestic players last time Nigeria won the AFCON. Uh, what would you say has gone wrong this time? Uh, yes, you're not a coach, but is it a technical issue or something that has to do with, uh, as Ungozi asked earlier, with uh, our grassroots uh, soccer development? Well, I will tell you this. Uh, and I have to be very sincere with you, too, because I've been, uh, for the past years, we all know that you know, we had a lot of what I, what I call a downturn in the, the domestic uh, football and that effect is what we are seeing today. So there have been some uh, low levels uh, in the past few years. So trend, we, we came in, the current uh, NPFL board came in just like last season. We had one, just one season, this now is our second one, but I would say uh, it's not been too good, that's why uh, you can see even the last, uh, that was the time Nigeria didn't qualify for the World Cup. Imagine Nigeria not even qualify for Africa that we're going now. We didn't qualify for the, the other time. Uh, imagine the other 17 that used to be our birthright. right. We didn't even qualify for it. So that means there have been some very, some lows of college in our football in Nigeria. So now we're just trying to come up and again, I can see the seriousness in the from the NFL president and the entire board of NFF, then coming again to the Premier League. I know in some few years to come, Nigeria will rise up again and be the best in Africa. Mm. All right, uh, we'll hold you up <laughs> on that. Well, there are several private-owned uh, clubs in the league now. How is that going to, or what does that mean for uh, the league going forward? Well, 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 I'm happy, you know, like, uh, people used to say that government business in Nigeria is nobody's business. You know, it's you know, why clubs who are owned by government, and sometimes, uh, I'm not saying that in all situations, but in most cases, you see those that are appointed to head football uh, teams, sometimes maybe political accolades of, of the governor, uh, because the states own it. Uh, the guy may not even probably be a technical in football. They will not ask him to go and head a football uh, team and chairman of a, a Premier League club, maybe as a result of political patronage. Then what do you expect? You won't get the best of results. And again, because clubs are supposed to be generating revenue, making money, and then but at a certain time when you have a football club, private clubs are making money, uh, all right, selling players, doing business with it. 
But you see that most time again, uh, clubs that are owned by government are not doing so well. Let me give you an example of uh, Remo Stars. It has been one of the best managed clubs in the country. To my United uh, of Gumbe, yes, uh, Suleiman Umar, the owner of the club has been doing very well. And Duma, you see, Remo Stars, Doma United, they, they are now number one, number two, correctly, I think, or well, maybe one, then three. Uh, the game, Sporting Lagos came in with a lot of panache and a lot of glamour. They brought glamour to our football. I was at uh, Unicorn Stadium twice to watch their home game, and I, what I can see, what I really, really witnessed that day was those things that I see in clubs uh, in Europe when I go to Europe to watch uh, club matches. Uh, and I hope other clubs will copy that. You know, they have corners for entertainment, uh, they, 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 they brought sometimes musicians, because football has to do with entertainment. So I believe more private investors in football will be the best, will, will be the best for Nigerian football and to energize the entire uh, football ecosystems. Well, uh, quickly here, uh, now, uh, from what you've highlighted, uh, speak to us about uh, the uh, investment and management. You've just uh, named some of those uh, uh, clubs that uh, uh, are presently doing well, but uh, how are the investors uh, making an incursion into all the NPFL? Well, if they didn't see, like I'll just tell you now, if they did not see improvement in the system, they will not want to show their face. And I'm again sure that very well if they're not making it in terms of making profit or generating revenue, they will not be interested. Because you cannot just have a, like register about 40, 50 players to form a team. Uh, you have week in, week out, uh, traveling up and down playing. You spend a lot of money on logistics, on transport, on payment of salaries, and not the rest. If you don't make money from it, you will want to run away from it. So I'm sure the investors that are coming in now, I, 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 all my friends anyway, I, I relate with them very well, and I know uh, they are very compassionate about football. That's in my one interest. They are in love with the game. Secondly, they are businessmen and are making profit from it. Finally, I mean, based on the quality of the squad going to Cote d'Ivoire, uh, what are the chances of the Super Eagles? How confident are you that they'll come back with the trophy? Well, let me just say, maybe in recent times, that's what I can call a uh, palpable crisis of confidence. It seems that Nigeria don't believe in our team anymore, and uh, you cannot blame them. Like I was saying, imagine us not qualifying for Afcon the, the, the last the, some times ago, a uh, few years ago. Imagine us not qualifying for even under 17 days. We, we, we have won uh, the global uh, competition four times. Now, in recent years, we have not been playing well. I mean, the national team. So when people are saying they don't have confident, confidence in our team, they have <coughs> right to think so. But as for me, that's what I would call, again, some uh, level of what I can call conspiracy of hope. That is hope. Those guys individually are very good. And it takes the coach to let them play like a team. If they can get it right, I would the Nigerian spirit in them, don't doubt them. They can win the Afghan. They can win the cup. Mm. Binga Elegbele, Nigeria, Chairman Nigeria Premier Football League. It's been a delight having you on Newsnight tonight. Thanks uh, for joining us. <laughs>